buying groceries, you should make a list. Putting furniture together by yourself, there's an instruction list for that. If you're performing routine surgery or flying to the moon, there's checklists for that too. For those two, there's checklists for those two. Lists are such underrated tools for productivity and unless you have super amazing working memory 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, you have to admit that having an effective list like number one, confirm your patient's identity before number two, bake the incision, that'll save you a world of trouble. My introduction to productivity is a ball but my introduction to productivity is a book called Atomic Habits by James Clear and in this book he lays out four laws of behavior change the first rule being make it obvious I know it's common sense so maybe I am the last one to do away with thoughts like I don't need to write this down a major exam isn't something you just forget however if you do think the way I used to in my second year in college Please let me try to convince you to write it down. The number one reason why lists are amazing is they are super cheap. All you really need is a writing tool and a surface to write on. Number two, lists let you keep track of your priorities. Writing your plans down makes it more likely for you to do them. Maybe it's magic, maybe it's just that lists help you not forget. Number three, lists let you keep track of what works for you. When you're trying out new ways to be productive, whether it's exploring a different location or trying out different music, keeping a list of the different techniques that you've tried out and making notes about whether or not those techniques work for you saves you a whole lot of time and helps you figure out what the best conditions are for you to get into the zone. Number four, lists free up working memory. What is working memory. Well, working memory is the temporary storage for whatever you are currently focusing on. I imagine it to be like a tiny cramped desk that can fit only four items at a time before the desk itself disintegrates these items and sucks them into nothingness. I hope this image helps you understand that working memory can fit so few in so little time. So, you would want to free it up for things that you want to be focusing on. I recently finished an online course called Learning How to Learn with Dr. Barb Oakley and Dr. Terry Sinofsky. In one of the lectures on procrastination and memory, Dr. Oakley recommended using task lists to keep track of things you intend to learn or accomplish, and to free up your working memory for actual problem solving. Number five, lists are everywhere. The internet is full of templates for lists in different kinds of situations. So you can just google list for making a YouTube video. And I think there are checklists for that. Hopefully I've given you enough reason to take advantage of this free productivity tool and incorporate it in the meaningful work that you do in your own lives. One list that has been helpful to me so far is something that I call my good night, good morning checklist. It's a checklist I go through in the evening before I go to bed so that I can lay everything out that I need to make it easier for me to start working the next day. This is what my list looks like, and I want to help you make your own. This is super easy. Why, why, why did I talk like that? So this is what my list looks like, and I want to help you make your own. And it's super easy. It's three simple steps. Number one, think about the things you need when you're working. Number two, write them down. Number three, revise. If you need to change anything, change it. Do whatever works for you. It doesn't have to be perfect the first time you make it because preferences change and I'm still working on the kinks in my own good morning. No, it's not called good morning. It's called a good night good morning checklist. So you can go on and work on your list and I'll see you in the next video. Bye! Number one. Number one reason. Number one reason. Number one reason. Um,